Okay guys, welcome to Florida Keys Life. I'm Jason. If it's your first time here, I appreciate you watching. Uh, many of you said you wanted boat repair, boat review videos, so here we go. I'm going to do a 100-hour service on my boat, and I've already recorded and done a 20-hour service in a previous episode. Uh, the 100-hour service is very similar, except this time I'm going to take the entire lower cowling off, midsection cowling off, so I can just inspect all that stuff behind there, make sure there's no corrosion or nothing going on. I got a little divot taken out of my skeg on my left side motor, so I'm gonna, my port motor. I'm gonna show you how to repair that with a little bit of JB Weld. We'll get some paint put back on it because I want it to be right. And uh, we're gonna go from there. So follow along. Like I say, first I'm gonna take these cowlings off. Uh, I'm gonna take those cowlings off, midsection cowlings, inspect everything, then, then I can figure out exactly what parts I need. Three, two, one. Welcome to Florida Keys Life. Now the reason I'm even doing this today, it's a little windy. Uh, I got 100 hours on one motor, like 98 on the other one because of an electrical issue I had a while ago. Uh, but anyways, uh, it's windy today. All the rest of the week is nice. I'm gonna be gone for a few weeks after that. So I'm fishing every day this week. And these, when those, the service minder comes off, it's a loud chirp. And the reset process, which I'll show you at the end, is kind of a pain. But if I reset it while I'm fishing, then my schedules get off a little bit. Because I'll probably put 15 or 20 hours on the boat this week. So if I reset the service minder, it's going to mess up the whole schedule. I could unplug the alarm. That's not always preferable. And then do the service at the end of the week or when I get back in a few weeks. But to avoid all of that, I'm technically at 100. I'm going to bust it out all in one day, just get it done, get the parts, put it back in the water, and be fishing tomorrow. This is a 8mm. Uh, now you can use a Phillips head on those screws in there. Here, let me show you. Um, that one might be kind of hard to see. Uh, there you go. You should be able to see that one. You could use a Phillips. It's a long head of screwdriver. You got some of them down there. Uh, but you have the threat of stripping them out. I'm not a fan of that. It's a brand new motor, brand new boat. So I'm going to go ahead and use an 8 millimeter socket. Long extension to reach past these uh, recesses here. Okay, so we don't want to come out. Another one right there. Oh, they stay in there. They got a little recess. Very nice. Okay, so it should be one, two, three, four, five, six. Should be six screws. Let's see what we got here. Oh, there's some from the other side. Okay, there's one from the other side, and it looks like I'm gonna have to unplug the tilt switch because the tilt switch is in that midsection cowling as well. Okay, so let me bring you around over to there. So tilt switch right here, and here's the plug for it. Ah, pull out. There you go. That little tab, pull out and up. That unplugs the tilt switch. Well, then you got some guide pins right here for that. So let's uh, let's figure out how to get it off now. Oh, that's what was holding it. The gasket fits in that groove right here, this gasket. Yeah, so it started to come off. So see, I do got a little bit of salt down in there, and that's what we're going to clean. There is one more that I missed. Something doesn't feel right, stop, don't force it. And 
and that's exactly what it was this other screw up way in the front I thought there was just one over there there's two so that's seven screws all together holding it on seems like good quality I like the seal as I'm looking see I got a little bit of salt corrosion down here so I'll be able to clean that up It'll be a lot easier to change the oil filter a little bit of salt corrosion up in here shift mechanisms that's the shift motor itself and then a little linkage comes down to shift it right there I'll be able to grease everything up a little better Ooh, I got some little bit of rust happening right here that's not bueno so this is probably a good idea to do this the first time I did it without taking it off this is probably a better idea I love that no drip uh, or gel WD-40 it gets it good okay so other than oil and filter, I don't think there's any additional parts. Just got to do some cleaning. Yeah, I see coming in from the air intake, I got a little bit of salt up in there. So I'm going to put you on time lapse over here and I'll get the other side off. All right, so now I'm going to give them all a light spray off where I see a little bit of that salt growth, especially down here around the gasket go round up my parts. I'm okay with a light spray off of fresh water because uh, for one it's going to dry while I'm getting parts. For two, I'm going to hose it all down with uh, a gel penetrating oil. Corrosion X, the heavy duty Corrosion X, that works real similar. Uh, before I put everything all back together and put it in the water, it's going to be nice and coated and corrosion free. Okay, before I go get parts, I decided to take a look at this skeg. So here is, uh, see where it got hit on that little divot. Now I was just idling. I was coming actually into, um, into our canal and I was partially tilted up. I just didn't quite get it enough, but not a nick on the prop. Skeg did its job, that's what it's supposed to do. And I was going to fill that with epoxy and then sand and repaint the skeg. However, it's so small, I'm just gonna sand it a little bit uh, and then repaint the skeg. Got a little paint come off of this skeg too. It has, doesn't have any nicks on it, but uh, it's seen some, probably a, lobster pot rope or something like that. So I'm going to sand this down and uh, we'll repaint it and keep it nice and fresh. That way when, when it's got fresh paint on it, you know if you hit something, uh, you know it. Otherwise it's kind of hard to tell. It. Which by the way, if you don't want to pay for uh, another sander, this that goes on a drill right here, this is like 15 bucks at Home Depot. I've used it to sand the bottom of this boat sand my marlin project i mean it, you put this on you put the drill on high speed for 15 bucks you got a sanding attachment you just use these four inch stick on sanding discs works really good got barely any catch on it so we'll just touch it up we get another ding that's substantial which as much run as i do i will eventually then i'll fill it with epoxy and re-sand it back to shape and Call it good. You could put skeg guards on it. Skeg guards on it. These little bolt-on attachments down here. However, they they stick down a little bit more than the other ones. For one, for two, they create a little resistance in the water. And I'm, I want maximum fuel efficiency because I like to fish as much as I can on as little budget as I can. So, anyhow, that's what we're doing. We'll get some original Suzuki paint. Get it all touched up. Look good as new. All right, guys. Grab a quick bite to eat. Thankfully, it's nice and cool today. Uh, back from the parts store. So there we go. 320 bucks for the stuff. Now, I had to buy the new pump, the Suzuki version of the pump. If you saw in my last episode, the Suzuki drain plugs, you see right there, is a different size. That's a 10 millimeter size in the drain plug. This is the size for Merck and Yamaha. Additionally, if you look at here, their bottle cap pump for their gear lube bottles is a bigger neck than Merck and Yamaha. So to make life easier, I bought the Suzuki deal. But it's 320 bucks for all the stuff. Next time it'll be a little under 300. And it's about a thousand dollar service or more to have a hundred hour service done on these shops. So 
still saving some money. Now before I went to eat, I made sure both lower units were drained and I drained this one. Now I'm gonna move the bucket over to drain the port motor of oil. Then we'll work on the oil filters themselves. Eight millimeter Allen sockets, the way to go. And to the side here so that you can see it now. It shoots out pretty good. And the gas can stay inside the deal, so you just want to make sure where that's at. So once it's done, I'll have to take the, the gas out. So keep moving the bucket, catch the oil. Once that's satisfied and draining, we'll start doing the filter. So it up, have the lower unit back up, and back in the water fishing. Not too terribly long. All right, get this oil filter much easier doing it this way than with the cowling on. I should have probably done that on the first surface. Now you notice my filters, I got a lot of that box spray on the filters. I just read an account recently uh, of a guy, and I've known that this has happened before, but where he was way offshore, like 50, 60 miles offshore fishing, sprung a hole in the oil filter. These oil filters will rust and corrode if they get a little spray on them and then you get a pinhole in your filter you lose all your oil and you're dead in the water so i'm real cautious with these oil filters for one don't pinch them too tight with a pair of pliers when you put them on they only got to be hand tight and then some not plier tight second thing is coat it really good with uh, some sort of coating there we go also, one thing I noticed by taking the cowling off, there's a zerk fitting right here on the sh shaft of the shifter, so I can hit that grease fitting. So I think it's a better plan to take those cowlings off, make sure these gaskets are situated, any kind of salt corrosion, I think it's a way better deal. All right, put a little bit of oil on the gaskets. One of those old tradition things you probably don't have to do. Uh, anyways, turn it on. Like I say, hand tight. There we go going nowhere so we'll get this all sprayed up and we and do our uh, service now I'm probably gonna put this plug back on it's the old washer gonna pitch that I'll save a few now technically these aluminum washers so they've been using these in the diesel world forever and on an aluminum washer or even a copper washer you could get put a flat piece of emery cloth on a table sand those down and resurface them and reuse them see what happens Hope you can see it there's a little notch right there where the shoulder of the actual plug was sitting on this washer if you simply resurface it it's as good as a new washer for whatever the few bucks that it is to buy a new one i'm just going to put a new one in but in a pinch you could reuse it yeah, see that's the when you look at the new washer here it's just completely flat that's the difference that little groove that's made from the previous one if it doesn't line right up with the shoulder of the bolt, that's where you could potentially get a leak. It's all clean, so I'm gonna put the gasket back on. When I'm all done, the last thing I'll do is spray the cleaner on it. I'm gonna grease it first. But before we do that, I'm gonna move on to the other side, which is just more of the same. So filters on, oil's drained, we're ready to fill. I'm gonna grease it first from down here, we'll do the lower units and fill the motors last. All right, I'm gonna hit the other side, I don't need to watch it again. Okay, this is gonna be kind of tricky to record, but I'm basically in the down position, turn them one way and I can get some of the grease zerks, turn it the other way, get some of them, then I gotta tilt it up to get some. So you can see, got a nice grease zerk right here for the shift shaft get to that of course how to grease on the grease gun classic all right here we go just a few squirts get this one
need much. By the way, I probably haven't told you before, but this just comes from my experience with equipment and stuff, so. What's uh, that? Grease gun. I put a, bought a flex blend, put it on it, and a locking end grip. Now, I think there's a company called like Lop Grip, Lop Grip, Lock Grip, or something like that. This is the Walmart version of it, but. So it locks onto the Zerk fittings. So, because sometimes angle's hard to get, it makes life a lot easier. Okay, I'm gonna go hit the other side, same thing. Okay, just about done with grease it, but I wanna show you. So over here on the port side is how you uh, grease the steering shaft. It's, I think they call it the torque tube sometimes. See the nice part of that locking head is that I can let go of it, grease it. I wanna see where it comes out of the top or the bottom. There we go. Look at that, a little bit of water came out. It's pushing water out, it's still not running grease out to there yet. There it goes. There it goes. That was a good thing we grease that when we did. Put some extra grease on the top of the tilt rams. And where they land on the bottom, I know, was wearing some paint there. I'll come over here and see what this one does. Over here on the port motor. Oh, a little bit of water coming out the top already. There it goes grease coming out the bottom. Beautiful. Okay, I'll clean it up. Okay, before I lower these down, I just want to show you this awesome WD-40 gel loop I'm going to show you up above, but I'm going to hit all my tilt components here. Now this stuff sticks really good, so it it will wear off in the water, uh, but it will also keep my boat working longer, which will get me home safely. See this stuff is really thick and it just sticks. All of that aluminum, a lot of people don't know, but dry aluminum is somewhat absorbent. It'll absorb some stuff. So just let it absorb it really good and that'll help coat it and protect it. All of this was ceramic coated with the uh, shoot, what ceramic coating I put on. I can't think of the name of it right now, but um, so it doesn't get a lot of growth. It, it doesn't, uh, but this protects the corrosion even a little bit better. Really good stuff. Love it. All right, so before we put the lower cowlings on, let's get everything we can nice and protected. Especially that oil filter like we were talking about. Any of these fittings, a lot of electrical connections. Injectors, super important. Without injectors, you're pretty screwed. Fuel filter, all those connections. These are spark coil packs. Get those connectors all coated. Zinc, zinc head, so those bolts will come out easy. Now the next service we do, we'll probably change those Zeeks, because that'll be the 300. It'll be the next one. Electrical. If I remember right, I saw a little bit of corrosion on that starter, so I'm going to get up on the transom of the boat to make sure that's good and coated. cannot put too much protection on your engine. There's, it's just impossible. That's your voltage regulator, there's your ECU, these connector starter, here we are. Now I'm gonna pull that back. Okay, we're good there. Okay, just to make sure I don't miss from this perspective. 
anything that might need protection. The fuse box is in there. I've actually had to change those fuses, so. There's a connector up on top. I'm not sure what that goes to. We're running out. There's a can now. I sprayed my trailer before I went and grabbed my boat, so did one trailer hosing and one engine hosing service so that's what you get out of the can these are about 10 or 12 bucks from home depot still got to fill the motors it's the last thing to do all right we're gonna put the lower cowlings on and we'll come fill them up corrosion is not your friend Okay, now what I'm gonna do here, some of you might think is kind of sketch, but you see you got this rubber gasket that seals water out from getting up into here, because there's off there's water coming here all the time. Now I'm not underwater. Uh, I guess backing down on fish and stuff, I've, been, I've, I've had the back of the engine submerged. Uh, so they do occasionally. Um, but anyways, this dry gasket it always helped to have a little bit of lube on it. I just ran out of my gel uh, deal. I got another can, but in order to kind of just make it more expedient, I've got this semi-clean engine oil here. I'm just gonna dip rag in this oil and just rub it on this gasket here. So that when I put, um, when I put my cowling back on, it's gonna go right over this nice gasket, not catch on anything and have a nice seal right in that housing. Right there. I'm getting this. I'm getting your wires in there is gonna be a little tricky too. Okay, I like it. Dip it a little bit in here. Up and around. Kind of moistens the rubber. It doesn't dry out. Okay, really nice. I like it. Okay, on the cowling. I'm put those back now. I'm going to start by cleaning it out a little bit. It's nice and clean, but I'm going to start with the side with the trim switch because that's the way it came off. So, go in up over here. Now I put unplug the trim switch when it was on first so I think I can just leave it there you can see how that gasket seals in there there we go see it lined up right there and then in the front let me see what's it doing here oh, it came down okay there we go we're in there now before I tighten it down, let's we're gonna plug that trim switch in first, just to be sure. There's that. Come on, buddy. There we go. There's the connector. Okay. So I squirted some gel lube inside that connector. You didn't see that. Okay. That's in there. So now let's start with those ones in the front. Do it in exactly reverse order. And you don't want to just wail on these like a like a madman here. Make sure the threads are in there. In fact, I'm not going to tighten these down with the gun. I'm going to come back to the ratchet to do their final tightening. I'm just running them in. Okay, so two in the front, and we'll get the ones on this side a little easier to see. But you can see, we got this nice sealing gasket right here. Top and bottom seal. Cowling seals around there. Really good job. Good job, Suzuki. Okay, now this side, the tricky thing, you got to get the, the cables in there. Oh, before we move from the other side, I should double check that trim switch to make sure it's going to work. Beautiful. Okay, so I'm gonna start in the front with this bad boy because 
looks like. The hard part. Should get it to a line, huh? Wasn't really hard at all, actually. Just gotta make sure you line up your cables and that guides. I'm sure there's a torque setting on these. It's probably something around 10 pounds. services it lets you give you a much better service on the motor. Take it down. Very good. Good job, Suzuki. It's not uh, all that difficult. Gives you good access. Okay, I'm gonna do the other side. You don't need to watch it. Okay, guys, let's give it a go putting lower unit oil back in. So this is the Suzuki rig up that I bought. So it's got the bigger neck on the deal, and it's got this adapter that, what do you know, is the right size to go in here. So way better than the other thing. But Suzuki had to be different than both Yamaha and Mercury, which is, Kind of dumb, but that's the way it is. So, anyways, we'll spin it on here. Now, I've learned this the hard way. Get all your plugs ready to go. So this, the bottom one's the magnet, and we're gonna put a new fiber washer on there. Okay, so I got all new gaskets on my plugs. Now, what I'm gonna do is a little bit different than what I did the 20 hour service. I am gonna put the plug in the oil level slot. Because I'm actually gonna fill that extra half a quart up to that vent spot. And I know Suzuki doesn't necessarily want you to, but that's what I'm gonna do. So, I've got my magnet and my drain. Put the plug in there when I'm full and then swap the drain out. So I'm ready to go. This takes 1.1, so it'll probably take a quart and a half or a quart and a quarter to go up to the upper level. Hey, there's one. coming out. So I'm going to take this plug, put it in the top, and pretty good, take it pretty good, okay, and we've got our clean magnet plug on the bottom. So with these two closed, some fluid will come out of here, but not very much. Not much came out. A little drip. All right. All done. Do the other side. Catch you at the end. Okay, so something I learned from the first time. One, it doesn't take the capacity that it says on here. It says it takes uh, oil capacity seven US quarts. Not true. It takes full eight, which is two gallons. Other thing is if you tilt the motors all the way down, it kind of gets these fill these oil fills pointed more straight up. So.
pull the dipstick tube out to give it a little bit extra vent. Down the crankcase. Unfortunately, my funnel kind of threads into the oil fill, so it works good. And there's four quarts, which, by the way, talking about oils, I did talk to a Suzuki engineer at the Miami Boat Show. And uh, I asked him about, you know, I live in the Keys, basically, and it's hard to find stuff sometimes. And he pointed out... Which I thought was interesting. So most of the wear characteristics of the oil, the marine grade oil versus the automotive oil is the same. Like the API service and, and the, the, those types of rating viscosity is obviously all the same. But what the marine grade oil or rated oil has in it that automotive oils do, don't is a lot of corrosion inhibitors. Now automotive oils have corrosion inhibitors, but not as good as the marine grade oils do. So something to keep in mind is it's probably a good idea to use and I should have had a dang rag here I'm like a dummy made a mess anyhow marine grade oils better than automotive grade oils for a marine environment because of the corrosion inhibitors okay guys I almost forgot to show you the critical step of resetting the uh, service reminder on here. So pull the key switch out, turn the key switch on, push these one, two, three, turn the key off, turn the kill switch on, now turn it on. Oh and there you have it, 100 hour service done. So while I am no professional, pretty good at it, probably a total of maybe hour hour and a half in this I took lots of breaks because it's hot and I'm not on a time crunch uh, but total I mean to drain everything change the fluids take the cowling up lube everything all up probably hour and a hour hour and a half and this is a, like a thousand twelve hundred dollar service job that I did for 320 bucks of parts so there you go I basically made myself $700 an hour so uh, by doing some simple stuff. Plus, when I go way offshore, uh, I don't have to worry if the oil filter was tight, if the drain plug for the oil was tight, if it has a new gasket on it, or if the drain plugs down there have a new gasket on it, because I know, and I know they're also tightened sufficiently. Uh, there's been a handful of warranty issues that have popped up that I've fixed because when I fix it, I at least know it's right. And so that's that peace of mind when you're going 20, 30, 40 miles offshore, running to the Bahamas or Tortugas or something. Uh, there's some value to that. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe. I appreciate you. And have a good day.